a part of the segment coming up right now. Our sponsor uh, for this show is one of the greatest, I believe, organizations in our community, uh, OL. I've had the, uh, the great fortune and the great pleasure of being uh, connected to that organization as their scholar in residence. I've had the opportunity to run with their chief development officer, an individual who I care about very deeply, who's an amazing person, Robert Katz. We've been to a lot of places together, and every time I go with him somewhere, he takes me all over, and I just keep on honestly getting blown away. I thought I was blown away, and then I got more blown away, and then I thought I was blown away, and then I got more blown away. And we figured what could be a better way to go into Yom Kippur. Many times when you go into Yom Kippur, it's really about me and me and me and me and me. And we walk in with this sort of self-focus in terms of, and there's, and there, and there's a positivity to that um, in terms of making sure you take your life seriously. Um, but we felt it would be really great if we had Ohel come on, and we have an amazing guest here as well. Um, we have Ohel's Shelly Berger, who's a longtime foster care director with Robert Katz. They're here in the studio today. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming, and thank you for sponsoring uh, the Book of Life, and thank you for all that you do for uh, the Jewish people. Charlie, as Ohel's official scholar in residence, how could we not sponsor? <laughs> and uh, we wish all the listeners not only a, um, a Tzom Kal and a meaningful Yom Kippur, but a good air, good air of Shabbos and good Shabbos too. Shabbos That's is right. kind of getting lost in all of this. Yes, yes. You know, just before we start, I saw a great piece that I want to share that from the Slanum Rebbe, the Nesiva Shalom says that Shabbos is the Isarus of the Leila, it's the comes down from Hashem, it just gives. That's why we can eat whatever we want. Yom Kippur is when we, it comes up. And the, when they combine together, it's a perfect storm. So we are actually entering into an amazing day, but thank you for pointing that out. And your speech this past week about Yom Kippur being the greatest day of all and the happiest day of all, I want you to know, is dead on. There's thank a medrash, there's a medrash from David HaMelech uh, from, uh, in Sefer Dvarim, the Tochacha, the... Uh, the uh, what's the word in English for tochacha, folks? Admonition. The admonition. Thank you. The the horrible things that will befall Am Yisrael. Simply one reason, Shelley. Hashem says, "Yan Asher Lo Avadetem Et Hashem Elokechem B'Simcha Uvetuv Levav," because you haven't worshipped your God Hashem with simcha and with joy. And the medrash there in Devarim says David HaMelech explained his relationship with Hashem as follows. Ani yareti mitoch simchati, v'samachti mitoch yirati. I feared God out of my joy, and because of my joy, I feared God. Wow. And to reach that level That's is amazing. what makes Yom Kippur the happiest day of the year. That was awesome. We should have spoke together. We could have been better. <laughs> Where were you last week when I was prepping? You're, you're, on, you're just fine on your own, but I just felt, felt like That's adding that. That's a great that. idea. Do you mind if I, I – wow, that's great. That's a, something definitely that uh, we should definitely be thinking about as we go in. So welcome to the show. Tell us um, a little bit about – I mean, the, the foster care program that you guys have is just – I mean, some of the most touching things that I hear that you tell me and that I have the opportunity to speak about is this program. And it's just an honor that I, we have you guys on to talk a little bit more about it and give us more of a sense of some of the things you guys are working on. So the foster care program is one that uh, was OHEL's uh, first program. That's how OHEL started uh, over 45 years ago. There were boys in the community who either didn't have parents or their parents had mental illness, couldn't take care of them, and the community bought a home, a house and put in house parents and, and created OHEL Children's Home and Family Services. That's mm -hmm. how we got our name. Um, with time, we uh, contracted to the city, and we also began to uh, find private homes for children to uh, be taken into if everything else failed and they couldn't live at home. And here we are 45 years later, OHEL, the Milton and Molly Shulman OHEL Foster Care Program is still in existence, and we are still here to make sure that any Jewish child who is removed from their home when the city feels that there is no other choice will be able to be placed in Jewish foster homes. And that is our contract agreement with the city. Wow. You know, it's amazing just to get the, the theme of this and why I'm so happy this is on now at the Yom Kippur show because on the, on the surface you'd be like, what does it do with Yom Kippur? And Yom Kippur, in my opinion, is all about Jewish children coming home to their fathers. Like that's, if you break it down, it's... I'm coming home to daddy. Earlier we had Lori Palanik who spoke about Father's Day. And that's what it is. And it's so important for us to realize that for many of us, we have opportunities to learn about our heritage, to practice, 
to come to our Father in Heaven because we have a structure around us, parents, family. And when you really think about children and parents, you have to sort of look beyond ourselves and say there are kids being born to hospitals right now that but for your program, they would never have that. And it's just wonderful to to get that perspective and to hear that. Um, and I'm sure you guys are always looking for more. I mean, I'm sure, I can only imagine that you have more kids than, than homes. Is that right? Well, we, uh, Baruch Hashem, you know, we definitely have Hashem's help when we do our work. Often I look around, I hear we, we the city calls us about a child and I'm saying, Who's going to take this child? And somehow Hashem always finds us the way when we Amazing. do our Hishtadlis. But we don't work alone, meaning Ohel is not just sitting there on 16th Avenue. Uh, this is a community program, and we cannot take care of Hashem's children without the help of people, not only our staff, our wonderful, dedicated staff, but this is the community's responsibility. And we're always looking for foster parents. And people think, oh, you know, you have to be some kind of like extraordinary person person. Our foster parents, you wouldn't look at them twice in the street. They look like anyone else. They're ordinary people who've put themselves out to do extraordinary, extraordinary things. Thing. You know, I always think of Mordechai. He was a, a, a very famous foster parent. His foster child, he was, uh, was uh, Esther, as right. he was Esther's uncle. He said, uh, he was et Esther. And uh, look uh, what his foster child became. And to have uh, the privilege, the opportunity, and often the challenge to be part of a child's life and be part of their future is, I think, um, something unbelievable. And, uh, you know, we, it maybe it becomes cliche if you save one life, you save a whole world. Well, each of these children is a world. And we must partner with the community to do everything we can for them as we would for our own children. Amazing. And, and, and that's something that you want to... Sorry, I cut you off. No, I, 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 I'm, Shelley is is uh, the most amazing ambassador, uh, one of several. But uh, I have no, I, I have no doubt that Shelley has, has been through the wars yeah. uh, m as much, if not more, than anyone else at Ohel, and has seen the struggles. You know, on, on Yom Kippur, we talk about Hashem being Bochen Klayot Valev, that that He knows what's in our insides and He knows what's behind, and and. Shelly knows what's behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. We at Ohel know what's behind closed doors. We see it. It's not pretty. Um, we're, we're a people, too, just like any other people. Um, and we need to remember that and be humble, especially around this time of year, um, and to understand that a lot of our brothers and sisters are going through an awful lot of pain. Um, children are going through an awful lot of pain. There are families in deep, deep distress, um, and you know, Charlie, you always talk about what makes the Jewish people great and, and what makes people great are organizations like Ohel. You always say that we can't just be good. Shelly Berger can't just be good. Shelly Berger has to be great. Ohel has to be great. Um, when we go and do in and go in and do this heavy lifting, y you can't just do heavy lifting and kind of be good at it. You've got to be great. These are people's lives we're talking These are about. people's lives that we're this talking is, about. This is the difference of getting a kid to a home or not. Right? This you're is you're the, getting calls in the middle of the, the night. The, the, and, you know, I we were at together at, at a um, at a Shabbos. I don't know if we can talk about you. I don't know how, but we were together for that weekend. I, I'm, and, I'm okay admitting that I was with you for Shabbos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we were together. Um, and we stayed by that the, the family um, together who had how many foster children well that's uh, i i'm happy to name to, to say the name bernie and elaine schickman and and I, they, I they fostered away. six children five of whom adopted the family name and took their family it, name it's just yeah. what they did for these these i mean it's just the we talk about chesed we talk about caring about your brother and your sister we talk about one family people i don't think people really appreciate this i don't think it is something that has yet become norm for our community that having foster children is something that people can do we had a show once on the book of life i think it was last year the martins and they i was blown away by how it changed their family and the martins their son was on the show do you remember Time. and he was saying it changed our lives like yeah. we were a different family from it we are a different because we see a world from a prism of giving and I think it's really important for everyone to understand this, and this is the time for it. And I, I really, this is the time for us to grapple 
with both the realization that there are other Jews in distress and we have a, an ability to help them. Charlie, let me tell you a story about uh, grappling with the fact that there are Jews in distress and what it's like working at OHEL. Um, and uh, uh, I think Shelley has a similar story. I know Mush Hellman has a similar story. I one of our co-presidents, he and Mel Zachter. And it happened to me, too. Um, I graduated Yeshiva University in 1985. You weren't teaching then, there, no, were you? I, I no, started, I think I started the year later okay. when I was still in elementary school. <laughs> sorry school. I missed you. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise <laughs> me if you did start in elementary school. That's very but, sweet. But uh, I'm, I'm in the class of 85, and... Um, there was one guy in particular, actually there were several in particular, who, you know, weren't really part of the in crowd uh, at, 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 and and clearly were a little bit on the outskirts of the social realm of the class of 85. And a few of us were always talking about, you know, one or two of these guys and what happened to them. Well, our uh, mental health services um, has uh, uh, a, uh, a retreat uh, where we take our clients, our mental health clients, uh, to uh, Bushkill Falls, and we uh, give them a vacation just like any other adult deserves a wonderful vacation and a wonderful hotel with great food and sightseeing. And I walk into the uh, to the resort where we took them, and there's one of the guys from the class of wow. 85. That's what happened. I'll call him Chaim. I said, oh, my gosh, this is where Chaim has been all these years. Wow. And it just smacks you silly. And it says, Rebono Shalala. You say, Rebono Shalala there, but for the grace of God go I. Mm. And that's the work of Ohel. Wow. And that's something that I think all of us should really take into consideration how much we can help and how much we can do, especially during this period of time. Right. In everything that we're doing, I mean, I think really the lesson isn't just Ohel. Obviously, it's Ohel as an example of a lesson in terms of the ability to walk into Yom Kippur and look around the room and say, okay, have I really, really looked out to my neighbor, my friend? You know, I'm, I'm really concerned about my future. I really want my kids to be okay. I really want the world, and my world should work. My husband or my wife should have the right part. And we sort of come in with this sort of, you know, and, and you know this more than I do because you see it in a way that I don't, but whenever someone's in a tough situation, it's normal and natural to sort of take care of yourself first, mm -hmm. right? If you feel like you're at in risk, you want to make sure you're okay. And people mistakenly think that Yom Kippur is a day where God's going to zap you if you don't step up. So they walk in with this like, oh my gosh, like, oh no, I may he may be hurting me. I got to get in the good book. Me, 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 my kids. And next to you could be someone that really needs so, your help and yeah. even your prayers. And and we got to think this way, right? You know, uh, Charlie, you know, the Avinu Malkeinu, you know, each Avinu Malkeinu is so loaded personally and globally for everyone. So you can imagine when we say Avinu Malkeinu, Chamol al Ololeinu Vitapeinu, um, you know, so it's not, it's it's also in the plural, I mean, Ololeinu, yeah. all of our children. Yeah. Um, so that obviously is really letting us know that it's not just only our children, who, of course, you know, we need to daven for our own families, but it's really the children, um, all children of Hashem, and that includes ones who may be, like you said, someone sitting next to you or somebody that, right. um, you know, that um, that you may not um, um, have even thought about before, but maybe you need to. And, yeah, I love uh, that. I love yeah. that idea. You know, in fact, I saw an amazing thing um, by the, I think it was the Arizo, that... Um, he said that you, we don't really have the right to come up to God in this period of time and talk about ourselves. Because if we would, and listen, listen to this, this is so powerful. When I read this, I was going crazy. It was, I think in the name of that Rizal, he said that if you stand up in front of God and be like, here's the deal. Like, I'm going to like color war it for a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, loud songs. I'm going to scream loud. And like, can you get a louder? And we're just going to, and like, I deserve, or I, can I get a good year? He's like, really? Like, that's it? Like, you show up like one day, you say a couple of words a lot, you know, you don't have like the bagel. And like, now we're good. And there is, we don't really have that right. So what we do is we say, no, 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 it's not for me. It's for us. God goes, wait a second. You care about us? Now it's different. Now this isn't being selfish. Now you're being appropriate, right? You care about everybody. You want, you, you want everyone to win? Well, then if you want everyone to win, 
Now let's talk. And what you're saying on the Avinu Malkanos is so true, which is it's plural. In fact, everything is plural. There's no moment really in Yom Kippur where we talk about ourselves because it's inappropriate to come to the master of the world, even though he's my dad, and say, I am so focused on me that I don't remember that I've got a brother and sister on both sides. And I think the message here that you guys stand for and the message that we need to take from this is that we have to start to be the people, and we already are in so many ways, and we can be more. Much more. We can be the people that mm-hmm. look over and yes. say, you know what, someone else is having a simcha, I'm happy for them. Or you know what, someone's going through a tough time, it's not, I'm, not, I'm not judging their tough time by the impact that it has on me, or I'm, not, I'm really trying to empathize with them and to, and to really see what they need and to give it to them. And someone told this to me this today. My wife was telling me this year that she went to. She was saying such a great point. She said, if you can't help and you can't give, at least you can pray for somebody. At least you can sit over and say, I just care that you're going through something and I want to be part of it. And I, you know, that, that I think is just as important as, as anything else. I once heard Rabbi Grossman say, V'ahavta l'reacha kamocha, the true meaning of V'ahavta l'reacha kamocha, love your neighbor like you would yourself, is love your child's neighbor as you would your own child. <laughs> the, minute, the minute you show love to your child's neighbor as much as you would show to your own child, then you have truly accomplished the mitzvah of V'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. That's great. Kamocha. That's, that's, and, and that's Rabbi Grossman. Well, yeah, he's pretty he good. Is. Yeah, he's good at this stuff. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's 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 you know what? And by, by the way, you you talk about um, uh, it being plural. Here's what we all have to do in Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Yeah, you, you ever get on a plane, and the flight attendants give you the instructions, and you're supposed to put the oxygen mask on yourself first, and then put it on the child seated next to you. Yeah. And I always said like. That's not the way we were taught. Like, right. I don't know. My first reaction would be to take the Help oxygen the mask and put the oxygen mask on the kid first, right. and then I'll worry about myself. I'll figure it out. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think this is the work that we're talking. I mean, Shelly's sitting here nodding. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're talking about it's not about us. It's not right. about us. No. You, the ox- if the plane is he- going through heavy turbulence and the oxygen masks fall down, take the oxygen mask and put it on the person next to you first because you're doing okay. You'll figure it out yourself. You don't know how the person is next to you. So I do have a problem with the FAA. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll make well, sure that well, we bring that up. Right. Well, we do want to have uh, healthy workers, healthy staff to yeah. take care of the kids, but it, it does sound counterintuitive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we uh, just always want to, you know, put that out there. Um, you know, you may um, think about becoming a foster parent. It yeah. sounds really scary. You're afraid your kids will be traumatized forever. You hear from um, children whose parents took in foster children, how it made them into people that they may not have been. But at least if you ever thought about it, um, owe yourself the uh, opportunity to just call up and learn more about it. Yeah. Um, and it may be for you. It may not be for you. But uh, certainly always call OHEL. And if it's something you thought about, um, or if you have a neighbor who's a foster parent, maybe you can support that neighbor in different ways if it's not something you could do. I think this is probably the first time maybe I can ever think, and I'm, what do I know? I'm all, you know, that, yeah, you're only Charlie. No, I mean like that, a, <laughs> that before Yom Kippur, that people are going to go in, I hope, I can only dream if before Yom Kippur, people walk in and go, do you think I can be a foster parent? Honey, can you imagine right, right. if people walked into before Yom Kippur and said, you know, I'm at this point in my life, or I'm at this point in my life, or I'm at this age, or that age, or wherever I am. This is, I didn't realize I can do more, or I got kids at home, and I, I have more room. I have more room. And or I don't have kids at home, but I have a lot of love to give. Yeah, and, I, 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 and I ne- it never dawned on me that I can go out and get a foster child and change somebody's life entirely and change my own. Exactly. And when I went to that, that house with you in the Hamptons, and the, the, she spoke about how her, her daughter said to her, some children grow in the, in the mom's stomach. Some children grow in the mom's hearts. I was like, right. home. I was like, that's yeah. it. Game, that is Game over. over. Checkmate. Check right. Mate. Check right. Out. Right, right, right. right, right. right. We rest our case, right. Your Honor. Time for the postgame show. Right, right. 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 <laughs> and I think if we, if we saw that and appreciated that um, – in that and everything, I think we would uh, we'd only grow grow, grow stronger. 
And so we, we thank you. If I can just finish with this thought. Sure, I, I, absolutely. I don't, not that I need the last word, but Shelley, you can have the last word. This mm. is just my last <laughs> word before we, we, we depart the air. Um, I heard this from my Rebbe, Rabbi Yaakov Neuberger, that uh, we say during Slichos, especially at Ni'ila, one of the things we daven for, we say, Shetasim dimotenu benotcha lihiyot. Kadosh Baruch Hu, please take our tears and put them in a flask that you keep next to you up in Shamayim, next to your side, so that they should be our zchuyot, our merits. Our tears are supposed to serve as our merits. and You're supposed to take those tears, God, and, and pla- place them in a flask because we know that they exi- it exists. And what Rabbi Neuberger said was, the horror of Tisha B'av was Eicha. The horror of Eicha was the dimata alechia, that her tears remained on her cheeks. The tears never made it up to the flask of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That was the harsh penalty for the Churban Beis Hamikdash, of of the t- of our tears remaining on our cheeks. And so we pray that you know at Ohel and and all around us we see so many tears and so many families in pain, and we just pray that the words. Shetasim dimotenu benot chaliot that people's tears that we encounter on a daily ba- on a daily basis make it up to Akadosh Baruch Hu's flask and turn into their merits. Oh, that's amazing! And, and I pray back I, the bracha that I give you guys, brachas hediot. Um, and bracha says it's a, it's a big completely deal. bracha hediot here. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 my bracha is that you really you really should not only have more and and anything that you need and resources wise, but you should really become and you already are. But we should really digest and internalize that message. I, I hope and pray that this Yom Kippur, we walk in and we really feel at every sense of the word, because we're not perfect. And I don't think we're made to be perfect. I think we're made to be fallible, which is why we have a day called Yom Kippur. And I think the growth of an individual is his ability to grapple with his imperfection. When you grapple, when you have a perfect being and you're imperfect, that chasm is, is critical. And I, I, if you go through all the sources, as much, he almost ne- he never asks us to be perfect, but he asks us to be kind, and he asks us to be caring, and he says, you know what, you may not be perfect to dad, but you got to take care of your brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's your brother. And I really believe that if us as a nation, this Yom Kippur would resolve to be more open, a drop more open, a drop more giving, you never know. I mean, you never know. Someone may say, you know, I'll, I'll call. Maybe. Maybe it won't work. I don't know. But, like, we never would have thought of it. But maybe we'll call Do or maybe we'll give or maybe I'll, I'll, I'll cry or maybe I'll dance. Or this year, I'm going to try to be, and Rabbi, we should have Rabbi Foreman on. He spoke about the power of confessing how you're giving up yourself to somebody else and saying, I haven't changed anything yet, but I just want to recognize that I'm sorry. And I think that humility that ability for us to come off that ledge, a drop, and say, I could give more. I could be more outside focused, shifts who we are, puts us in a life of, of, of life, right? It, that is the book of life, mm. right? And it, it lets our father look down. You know, as his parents, you look down and you go, I don't care if you're mad at me, but, you know, you, you get along. And it looks, has him look down and go, at least they're getting along. And... I mean, that's all. Everything that I've ever read said that's bringing us to Gula, right? The way you want this thing to be at where it should be is when you guys start getting along. And my bracha to Oel and my bracha to us and is that we should uh, see a time where we don't need you guys anymore mm. because we're doing it on our own, mm-hmm. and you guys get to retire we're and happy, sit around. We're, we're happy not to retire. We're happy to be out of work. <laughs> You'll be out of work, and we'll happy be able to be out business. of work for a year. It'll, we'll it'll sit on the radio all day. We'll just yeah, chill we'll the three of us. Yeah. It'll be great. It'll hey, awesome. awesome. We'll can you hear us? Can you hear us, Charlie? We'll just chef the nachos. Right, exactly. Thank you so much for being on the show. A good convention you are, and a wonderful, wonderful year. Thank you. So that was um, Shelley Berger and Robert Katz, two amazing individuals uh, from OHEL, OHEL Family Services. Um, what an amazing, amazing organization. And and I really mean this. And I know this is – I know some of you listening be like, that's crazy. But I, I want you to consider it because this is a time when you get to act crazy, right? When we're fasting for 25 hours and we're beseeching the creator of humanity. And, um, you know, this is – there's ever a time for us to be big. It's now. And maybe there is somebody that you can think of. That would be, um, it would be shy for something like this, or maybe you, maybe you are saying to yourself, you know what, I have more love to give, and there are, you know, babies out there that you know may never have a home, and 
it's just something that I, to, to consider. But if not, just just to really, and this is why I want them on the show so badly, and I'm so happy they were the sponsor and they can come down in person, because we really should be a people that think very deeply about each other even more. And we do, but even more. Um, speaking about wonderful children, this is uh, sponsored. I'm sorry, this is dedicated. 